Good afternoon and welcome to today's press briefing. It is with great sadness that we learned of the death of Judge Antonio Cassese this weekend. Judge Cassese was the tribunal's first president from 1993 to 1997 and the leading figure in the development of international criminal and humanitarian law. His death is a great loss. A book of condolences is available in the lobby of the tribunal for judges, staff and visitors of the tribunal to sign. I will now turn to some recent developments. In a special plenary held last Wednesday, Judge Theodor Meron and Judge Carmel Agius were elected as President and Vice President of the Tribunal for two years starting on 17th of November 2011 to succeed President Patrick Robinson and Vice President Ogon Kwon. The Tribunal's President, Judge Patrick Robinson, on Friday denied Dragan Zelenovich's motion for early release, having found that while Zelenovich had demonstrated some, albeit very limited, rehabilitation and cooperation with the prosecution, the high gravity of his crimes and the fact that he has not yet served two-thirds of his sentence weighed against granting his request. Zelenovich, a former Bosnian Serb soldier, was transferred to Belgium on the 27th of February 2008 to serve his 15-year sentence of imprisonment for torture and rape of women and girls in the town of Foča in Bosnia and Herzegovina during 1992. On the 17th of January 2007, Zelenovic pleaded guilty to seven counts of rape and the trial chamber sentenced him to 15 years of imprisonment on the 4th of April 2007 which was later affirmed by the Appeals Chamber. In the case of Ratko Mladic, the prosecution filed last Thursday the third amended indictment in accordance with the trial chamber's decision granting the prosecution's motion to add to the charges crimes committed in the village of Bishina in eastern Bosnia and Herzegovina. A further initial appearance will be held on Thursday the 10th of November 2011 to enable the accused to enter a plea on the new charge. It will be followed by a status, status conference in that case. Moving now to the courtroom schedule, the judgment in Vojslav Šešil's second contempt of court case will be rendered on Monday the 31st of October at 8 o'clock in the morning in courtroom 1. Šešil is accused of breaching protection measures ordered by the tribunal by disclosing information about 11 protected witnesses, including their names, occupations and places of residence, in a book he authored. The order in lieu of an indictment was filed on the 4th of February 2010 and the trial commenced on the 22nd of February 2011 and ended on the 8th of June 2011. Hearings in the trial of Radovan Karadzic will resume this afternoon with the testimony of Ivo Altia, who will be testifying about the events that occurred in the area of Priador during the indictment period. Proceedings in the retrial of Ramush Karadinai and others will resume on Monday, the 31st of October at 2.15 in courtroom 1. Hearings were adjourned to secure the presence of prosecution witnesses scheduled to testify. Hearings in the cases of Micho Stanisic and Stoyan Zhuplenin, as well as Jovica Stanisic and Franko Simatovic, will resume on Tuesday, the 8th of November. Finally, I would like to bring to your attention the closing event of the War Crimes Justice Project, which took place this morning in Sarajevo, where representatives from the judiciaries across the region met with the ICTY and other project partners to celebrate the project's many achievements. The War Crimes Justice Project, a 4 million euro project funded by the European Union, was launched in, to, in May 2010 and coordinated by the OSCE all the year in partnership with the ICTY and UNICRI. Its goal was to facilitate the transfer of knowledge and materials from the ICTY to legal professionals in the former Yugoslavia by enabling the exchange of knowledge and expertise between the ICTY officials and national legal professionals. The beneficiaries have hailed the project's success in achieving its goal of helping local judiciaries strengthen their capacities at handling war crimes cases. 
The closing event has been followed by a final peer-to-peer -peer meeting between Judge uh, Fausto Poker, Judge Liu Dankwin, Judge Frederick Karhoff, and Judge uh, Arpad Prandler, and judges from national judiciaries to share experiences in adjudicating war crimes cases. That's it for me. Uh, Mr. Bramertz, the prosecutor, will be in Sarajevo in Bosnia for a working visit next week from 31 October to 2 November. He will have a number of official meetings, including with the Presidency, uh, the Office of the State Prosecutor and Special Department for War Crimes, and representatives of the international community. The topics to be discussed include cooperation between the Office of the Prosecutor and BIH, the cases and investigation files transferred to Bosnia, the progress in the prosecution of war crimes cases in Bosnia, and the implementation of the war crimes strategy. The mission is undertaken in preparation of the next report uh, to be submitted to the Security Council. It will be submitted to the Council by mid-November. The, during the visit, there will be a press opportunity we will inform the media in due course about uh, the event and provide further details. Thank you. Are there any questions? Can I ask if there's any indication of the witness they're looking for in the Haradamai case has been found and is prepared to testify on the 31st? I can't provide any uh, information now, but I can uh, I can look into it and give you that uh, and check. Okay. Any other questions? No. Well, then um, I'll just uh, answer a question that we've received through the interactive press briefing. Ask the tribunal. Um, somebody asked uh, whether and how, rather, uh, video recordings of hearings in the case, case of Voislav Sheshel could be uh, accessed. Um, generally speaking, um, AV material from uh, public hearings of the tribunal is not, are not necessarily always uploaded on the website simply because of the sheer volume of, of such material. But of course, members of the public and other interested parties can always make a request to the media office uh, to be provided with uh, um, such recordings by providing um, uh, reasons for their request and indicating the language in which they would like to have uh, that footage uh, delivered to them. Um, I would also note that some of the um, recordings, AV recordings of such hearings, are already on the tribunal's YouTube uh, channel, and those include mainly uh, some initial appearances or important uh, um, um, events in, in a trial or in, in proceedings. And um, the tribunal's communication services uh, currently uh, working towards having all such key hearings uh, in past and ongoing cases uploaded in the coming months. Well, I presume there are no further questions, in which case, thank you so much and have a nice day.